in recent years the highest temperature uh, you know for mid-July. State Game and Fish officials celebrated the ribbon cutting of a new plot of land brought to protect, bought rather to protect, the lesser prairie chicken. Nestled between the Great Lakes and the heartland of America, Wisconsin stands as a crossroads of change, history, and hidden wonders. Ashore, the mighty Lake Michigan, and beneath the vast skies of the Midwest, this state is both timeless and unexpected. A land defined by deep forests, sparkling lakes, resilient communities, and a landscape in constant flux. Today, as the familiar rhythms of life carry on in small towns and vibrant cities, something unprecedented is unfolding. Scientists have gathered, questions hang in the air, and whispers of extraordinary events ripple through the airwaves, from breakthroughs in science that could redefine our understanding of human nature to environmental battles affecting the Great Lakes, to a natural event not seen for generations. What is it about Wisconsin that has drawn the world's gaze and captured the attention of the scientific community? As we unravel the layers of these developments, one question reverberates. What secrets are emerging beneath Wisconsin's tranquil exterior, promising both revelation and transformation? The gathering in Madison is the future written in our genes? At the heart of Wisconsin's capital, Madison, an event is underway that could alter the way we view ourselves and society at large. Hundreds of researchers, some journeying from far corners of the world, have converged not to debate politics or policy, but to explore the emerging and often controversial terrain of social genomics. Inside lecture halls, a buzz with anticipation. Leading minds exchange revelations, their voices blending into a chorus of hope, curiosity, and concern. But what exactly is social genomics? It's a field that delves into our DNA, the molecular script that governs each cell in our bodies. To understand how our genes interact with society, culture, and the myriad influences that shape us throughout our lives. Moving beyond the classic questions of nature versus nurture, social genomics investigates how genetic expression, how our genes turn on or off, might be influenced by social environments such as neighborhoods, relationships, community engagement, stress, and socioeconomic conditions. In Madison, scientists pore over the latest data revealing connections that indicate our surroundings and social experiences can influence how genes are expressed. Researchers are discovering, for example, that social isolation or chronic stress may leave epigenetic markers, chemical changes in DNA that do not alter the genetic code itself, but affect how it is read by the body. These markers could potentially be passed from one generation to the next the implications are profound. Could social genomics unlock hidden patterns in aging, health, and disease? Might it challenge cherished beliefs about identity and free will, showing that the tapestry of our lives is woven from both inherited codes and the world around us? Scientists debate questions such as whether community support can bolster resilience at the molecular level, and if exposure to adversity during childhood has a measurable impact on lifelong health. These findings carry pressing ethical dilemmas. What privacy protections are necessary when genetic data becomes linked with social and demographic information? As attendees at the Madison Conference present their research and explore policy recommendations, questions abound about how such knowledge could be utilized or misused, whether in workplaces, insurance settings, schools, or courts. Outside the lecture halls, the energy spills over onto the university lawns. Students speak with scientists, contemplating the possibilities that social genomics holds for understanding personal histories and public health. Inspired high schoolers begin projects to observe if life experiences correspond to changes in their own well-being, deepening the connection between scientific pursuit and lived experience. The lines between researcher, 
subject, and citizen begin to blur, making Madison a living laboratory where the future of genetic science, ethics, and social policy is being written and revised in real time. Emerging Threats The battle against PFAS in Wisconsin, beneath the rolling hills and clear waters of Wisconsin, an invisible conflict has reached the forefront of state and national conversation. Communities have become increasingly alert to emerging pollutants, contaminants that, until recently, received little regulation or scientific scrutiny. At the center of this issue are PFAS, PER, and polyfluoroalkyl substances, a family of synthetic compounds used in everything from nonstick cookware to firefighting foam. PFAS are sometimes called forever chemicals because of their near indestructibility in the environment and tendency to accumulate in human and animal tissue. For communities across the state, the questions grow urgent. Why don't these chemicals break down? What are the long-term health implications as they are discovered in well water, fish, and even human bloodstreams? Recently, this challenge landed before Wisconsin's highest court. In a case closely watched in legal and environmental circles, justices ruled that state environmental regulators can require landowners to clean up sites contaminated by PFAS, even if the chemicals have not yet been formally classified as hazardous at the federal level. The decision has profound implications. It empowers state government to act promptly to protect water supply, soil, and public health instead of waiting for slow-moving federal processes. This ruling sparks a new sense of urgency across Wisconsin. Landowners, farmers, manufacturers, and municipal leaders must now take greater responsibility in addressing PFAS contamination. Environmental agencies accelerate testing of private wells and surface water. Community groups in affected areas organize water testing events and demand updates on remediation efforts. Forums fill with concerned parents and residents, all seeking clarity and solutions. Scientists work alongside regulators to develop new technologies, filters designed for PFAS removal, bioremediation using specific plants, and monitoring systems to track chemical migration. Grassroots activism mounts as citizens question whether responsible companies should fund health monitoring and contamination cleanup. Amid the push for accountability, legal debates continue over who should pay for cleanup, the property owner, the original polluter, or the government. These tensions underscore the complexity of pollution in a world where industrial chemistry often outruns regulation. For average Wisconsinites, the ruling offers both hope and challenge. Many see the possibility of reclaiming their health and clean water, while others worry about the costs and confusion of implementing rapid new mandates. Still, the case sets a precedent. When faced with emerging scientific evidence of danger, waiting may no longer be an option. Outside Wisconsin, environmental advocates and legal experts observe closely. Will this lead to stronger protections across other states? Great Lakes under siege, resilience, or collapse. Central to Wisconsin's identity and economy are the Great Lakes, especially Lake Michigan and Lake Superior, vast freshwater seas that shape both natural landscapes and human destinies. Cities from Milwaukee's industrial shorelines to smaller lakefront towns depend on these waters for commerce, tourism, recreation, and drinking water. But these lifelines now face unprecedented challenges and mounting uncertainties. This spring, hundreds of scientists from across the region and beyond gathered in Milwaukee, determined to address the growing threats facing the Great Lakes. Their discussions take place in a climate of concern. Science programs and research funding have suffered sharp cutbacks, diminishing capacity to monitor, manage, and respond to evolving crises. The list of challenges is long, Aquatic invasive species disrupt food webs, diseases threaten native fish, extreme weather events, and changing rainfall patterns accelerate shoreline erosion and harmful algal blooms. Chemical contaminants linger in the water for generations, gradually silting into sediment while shifting climate imperils traditional balance between precipitation 
and evaporation, sometimes yielding abrupt changes in water levels and ice cover. At the Milwaukee Conference, scientists present modeling data predicting potential losses of keystone species, severe algal outbreaks that close beaches, and growing risks to drinking water systems. There is worry about the future. If public investment in research and lake management remains insufficient, vulnerabilities multiply and recoveries become harder. Yet the meetings are not only a forum for dire warnings. Amid adversity, researchers and communities innovate. Citizen science initiatives enlist beachgoers, students, and fishermen to gather water samples and observe species. Native nations revive age-old restoration methods, demonstrating how sustainable fishing, land management, and indigenous knowledge can complement new technologies. Small towns once defined by raw resource extraction, logging, mining, or commercial fishing, explore economic transition. Ecotourism flourishes in places that protect wetlands and restore spawning grounds. Teachers organize field trips to restored shoreline where children witness firsthand the connections between clean water and a thriving ecosystem. Amid these efforts, regional coalitions form to monitor the ballast waters of ships for new invasive species, share research on coastal erosion, and lobby for federal support to maintain infrastructure and habitat protections. Mayors, concerned families, and business owners unite in making the case that the future of the Great Lakes is inseparable from the future of the Midwest itself. As scientists stress, the risks are real, but so is the potential for recovery given sustained collaboration. The enduring question, will Wisconsin and the broader region rally quickly and boldly enough to safeguard a natural resource on which millions depend? And if so, what lessons might the rest of the world draw from this frontline struggle to protect one of the planet's largest sources of freshwater? A Cicada Awakening, Nature's Spectacle Return. As spring lengthens across Wisconsin's woodlands and farmlands, a different scientific marvel stirs beneath the soil. This year, in a phenomenon that occurs only rarely within the human lifespan, a notably large brood of periodical cicadas is expected to emerge across parts of the eastern United States, including areas of Wisconsin. These insects are more than summer visitors. Periodical cicadas operate on cycles of 13 or 17 years, spending most of their lives underground attached to tree roots before emerging synchronously in vast numbers. When the signal comes, most likely triggered by soil temperature, millions rise within days for a brief climactic appearance above ground, singing their rasping song, mating, and laying eggs to begin the cycle anew. For scientists, these emergences are both biological wonders and research opportunities. Why do such massive populations time their life cycles so precisely? What environmental cues shape their synchrony? And how might climate change or pollutants alter their patterns? Researchers study soil temperatures, changes in emergence timing, and the impact of factors like PFAS, or habitat alteration on these ancient cycle. For communities, the cicada event is an audiovisual spectacle. Neighborhoods are filled with a persistent chorus, and for a few weeks, landscapes are littered with shed exoskeletons. In some places, local artists draw inspiration from the event. In others, chefs experiment with recipes featuring cicadas for the adventurous. Science teachers turn the phenomenon into a vivid lesson in adaptation and survival. Yet this emergence also raises uncertainties. Scientists and ecologists observe closely for signs of ecosystem health. Are cicada populations strong or do environmental stressors threaten their numbers? Do chemical contaminants or land use changes pose risks that interrupt age-old patterns? Storytelling becomes part of the event as elders recall previous cicada years or share local legends. For many, the spectacle provides reassurance, a sign of cycles that persist despite human alteration of the landscape. For others, it offers a moment to reflect on how much has changed and what still endures. Above all, the cicada awakening asks us to pause, marvel, and consider our place in the larger rhythms of nature and to question how our actions today will echo through generations of creatures below the surface. The Prairie Chicken, 
and the solar settlement, balancing nature and progress. Not all of Wisconsin's recent headlines stem from environmental threats or rare natural events. On the state's open prairies and grasslands, another challenge has played out, a tug of war between conservation and the surge toward renewable energy. At the center stands the prairie chicken, a bird famed for its elaborate mating displays and calls, a living symbol of grassland biodiversity. The expansion of solar energy has created tension. Proposed solar installations sometimes overlap critical prairie chicken habitats, raising fears that new construction could further reduce the already vulnerable populations. Recently, a legal dispute unfolded over a planned solar farm with a conservation group filing court challenges to protect prairie chicken breeding ground. The case became a test for the compatibility of green energy projects with habitat conservation. Would new clean energy infrastructure come at the cost of a species survival? The story reached a pivotal moment as the conservation group agreed to drop its court challenge after a settlement was reached. Commitments were made to protect key prairie habitats and a restoration plan was devised to seed new areas with native grasses and wildflowers, create safe corridors for birds and monitor wildlife impacts. Farmers, engineers, ecologists, and local officials came together to balance the needs of wildlife with the urgency of renewable energy transition. Plans included details for designing solar sites with prairie restoration in mind, such as low impact fencing or maintaining strips of land for lecking ground, the spaces where prairie chickens perform their displays. This settlement offers an example of compromise, demonstrating that environmental priorities can coexist with technical and economic progress. Government agencies and researchers continue to monitor the site, contributing valuable data to the nationwide conversation about best practices in solar development. The unseen future, echoes of the past, visions of tomorrow. Throughout Wisconsin's history, the interplay of past and future shapes every landscape, whether glacial valleys, dense forests, or river-carved plains. Today, with scientists sounding alarms and new discoveries capturing public imagination, the stakes feel higher, the changes more rapid. What has recently emerged in Wisconsin is not a single headline or event, but a convergence of scientific challenges, community responses, and environmental adaptations. Scientists, citizens, and policymakers are drawn into questions about responsibility, resilience, and the unintended consequences, positive and negative, of both progress and neglect. Will legal victories in PFAS regulation spark a new era of environmental justice and preventive action, or simply highlight the complexity of holding polluters to account? As the Great Lakes face pressures from within and beyond Wisconsin, Will a combination of innovation, cooperation, and persistent advocacy be enough to preserve their vital role in the region's well-being? And as cicadas rise in their periodic spectacle, what reminders do they offer about renewing and protecting what is fragile and essential? Meanwhile, settlements that balance energy development with habitat protection point the way toward pragmatic optimism and shared stewardship. Across these varied arenas, the wider world pays attention, looking to Wisconsin for both cautionary tales and hopeful templates. Perhaps that is the essential story of Wisconsin today, beneath its peaceful lakes and forests. So, as the sun dips behind the pines and the last cicadas quiet, another day in Wisconsin closes, leaving us to ponder. In a place where so much is in flux, what will tomorrow reveal? And are we ready to face the wonders and challenges that await under Wisconsin's expansive skies? Are these developments shaping your perspective on Wisconsin's future? Do you see hope, warning, or both in these unfolding stories? Share your thoughts below. And for more explorations into the currents of change, be sure to subscribe and stay engaged. The next breakthrough or mystery could be closer than you think.